If you're looking to play a Windwalker Monk, but you've looked at some other guides and it just seems like a whole lot of work, well, it kind of is, but it kind of isn't. Let me explain to you the basics of the Windwalker Monk and how you can play it for dummies. What's going on, guys? My name is Steven with Level Up MMO. And as I said there, this video is going to be basically how to play Windwalker for dummies. It's going to be a simplified version, but it will be a good explanation. Now, it's not going to get into all the little details of every single stack and timing and resource management. It's going to give you the basics, but with enough detail to where you'll be able to do what I've been doing in the first two weeks of Dragonflight, and that is topping every single dungeon I've gone into, basically. Now, all of my M0s, my Mythic Zeros, I've managed to be the number one DPS, except for one where I was beat out by an Enhancement Shaman, but not by too, too much. But they were able to outdo me. Now, I will say, me playing these dungeons is without having all the best in slot right now. I don't have a three, like, 79 gear score or anything like that so there's still room for improvement but even as it stands it is very good so let's get into it so we're going to start things off with stat priority as usual as a monk you are going to want to focus agility this is going to be followed then by versatility critical strike and then mastery and haste right so this is based off of mythic plus on wowhead i'll go ahead and pull that build up but that is going to be the stats really no matter what you're doing you're going to want to follow that sort of breakdown of where you want your stats to be focused with that being said let's take a look at that build so you can see the talents i have i'll also provide the import link from wowhead down below so one of the big changes here from the build i had previously is that we have removed whirling dragon punch and they have diffused magic instead of damp and harm now those are just two of the main abilities that have kind of been switched around but it's definitely not all that has changed there's a lot different from what i used to run until now i'm not going to tell you all about what i used to run just know that this is doing way way better for me now in terms of the exact build that i have here it is going to be different depending on what kind of content you're doing again people run different things from mythic mythic plus versus raid so on and so forth same thing is with like dampen harm versus diffuse magic that is going to be more dependent on what you are running what do the bosses have which mob packs are most dangerous you'll probably adjust that with that in mind but this is a good bones and really even more than bones it fills out most of everything that you'll need now that you have your stats and you have the build let's talk about how you actually utilize this build in terms of the rotation so most of the time you're going to start with just hitting an expel harm to get one free chi and then take that into your tiger palm for two more and that's when you'll go into most of your damage dealers that's going to be fists of fury rising sun kick and of course the new one strike of the wind lord one huge caveat here is that you're going to want to build up your your hit combos right so with this in mind it's an easy way to increase your damage you do not want to use a single ability two times in a row you will always want to rotate to something else to keep that buff up so you'll go in and you'll use let's say your one then you'll use your two then you'll use your three then you might use your two again and then your one but you'll never do one of those abilities back to back because it will reset that damage buff that you're getting Another really important thing is that Zwin will not only do some passive damage itself, but will also take some of the damage you're doing and then deal it out. So what you want to do is save most of your big damage, your burst damage for right after you summon Zwin. So you summon Zwin, then you do your earth, wind, and fire, bring them out, have them focus on the right targets, and just start hitting things like Fist of Fury and your Strike of the Warlord. That is going to have you do a ton of damage right then and there, and then Zwin is going to be able to utilize that to deal even more damage. So those are the really important important things don't lose your stacks by hitting the same ability twice and make sure that when you use win you are then getting your biggest damage you also want to save your second use of the earth wind and fire just kind of like the first one for when you can also use your fist of fury again if there are multiple targets you definitely want to get in there with the spinning crane kick as well and of course as you're using these abilities you're going to build up more stacks that will allow them to do even more damage and of course you can get some free procs to use these abilities they won't take any resources you'll want to look for when they light up they're highlighted that lets you know that you can use those without using resources the two that you'll be paying attention to the most with this is going to be your spinning crane kick and the blackout kick these will proc and sometimes you'll be able to just use those to fill in some gaps and to save the resources that you don't want to use because you never want downtime on a monk you were hitting a lot of different buttons but you can almost perfectly play it out to where everything is being used at the right time so before we move into the boss fight i want to talk quickly 
specifically about the fact that if you know a boss is not immediately on the horizon and you'll have time to get your cooldowns back or close to back, go ahead and use those. There's no reason to hold on to them for the whole dungeon waiting for a boss fight to come around. Just go ahead and crack them. Maybe if you do a big pool, utilize those things and make sure you get the most damage and also get through the dungeon at the best pace by utilizing them. Now we move into the boss fight. How do I normally open those up? So a lot of the time I will throw down my totem and then I will go ahead and crack the Zuin and the Earth, Wind, and Fire, and then run in and hit the abilities necessary to be able to use the big damage dealers that we mentioned before, like Fists of Fury, so on and so forth. When you do that, again, you're going to build up all of that damage really quickly up front, and just like in this fight and in mob fights, if you get your opponent down to a low enough HP and you have your touch of death, use it. Use that because it is massive damage and a quick way to end multiple targets at once if you're doing some sort of mob, you know, a big pool, or if you're just in a boss fight, you can chunk them down much faster there at the end. So make sure you're utilizing that on cooldown in these dungeons. With all that being said, I'm going to once again go over the really important parts, and that is going to be use those cooldowns. Don't hold on to your earth, wind, and fire. Let those suckers rip. Get through these dungeons faster, up your damage, and of course, use them in conjunction with with the big damage dealers, right? That's what they're there for is to make the most of it. So same thing, Zuin. When you use them, make sure you have a lot of big damage to burst right after to get the most out of it because he's going to take 10% of your damage and hit that every four seconds to the thing that he's attacking. So save that burst damage, use it when you use Zuin. It's all about using these abilities at the right time. And of course, the last thing is do not use the same ability back to back. These are the core components. Make sure you use them appropriately and and I promise, even without knowing all the other crazy things, and there are other guides out there, shoot, maybe I'll make one that goes into way more detail about every single stack and when to use what exactly how. It's a lot. But without doing all of that, you can still be a great Windwalker monk by just following the principles that I laid out in this video. If you enjoyed this, if this was helpful at all, or you'd like to see more like it, let me know down in the comments below. And of course, let me know by subscribing to the channel and liking the video. You can always come chat with me live or ask questions at twitch.tv slash heartbreaker underscore TV. And as always, good luck in your adventures.